Hello, everyone. Welcome to our latest episode of Insecurity. We are joined by a special guest, John Salter of Ubico. Hi there. And, of course, we always have Tom. Hey, Tom. Howdy. So, we're lucky enough to bring in John from Ubico to discuss what Ubico is and why we should use it. So, John, what's a Ubico? <laughs> well, Ubico is a company, and YubiKey is our is our uh, product. And uh, six or seven years ago, we were looking around um, uh, strong authentication and just finding everything was just so compact, complex, so cus uh, so cumbersome, and actually so difficult for normal people to to acquire. And we felt that it must be an easier way of doing authentication than, than, than all the methods that were out there that were, uh, uh, were reasonably strong and secure. And um, the, the blinding um, uh, realization was that the best way to send something secure to uh, a website is via a keyboard. Um, so we thought, well, what if we have a keyboard that just has one button, and every time you press it, it generates a securely encrypted time variant one-time passcode. And we did a bit of, um, of research and came up with the YubiKey. A YubiKey is a, a one-button keyboard, and when you touch the button on the, on the YubiKey, it sends a securely encrypted one-time passcode to the website, which lets you log in securely. So it's, it's really, um, this, in case anyone hasn't seen it, is a, uh, a YubiKey Neo. Uh, which has got NFC functionality in it, so you can actually do the one-time passcode on some mobile device on your phone that has NFC enabled, which is also really cool. Absolutely, and and really to understand it and see it in action, you need to use it with with a a service or a, or a site that has got YubiKey support. And um, knowing that the, the last podcast in uh, on this channel was about LastPass, we've been working with LastPass for over four years now, and you can uh, add YubiKey support to LastPass. Um, so that you you can control what computers actually can download your LastPass vault um, and only allow a computer that has its YubiKey attached to it um, to to download your uh, securely encrypted LastPass vault. Um, and you say, Tom, that uh, you've you've got one with NFC. You can extend that out and and use that on Android devices and and configure LastPass so that it'll only download to an Android phone uh, if you first of all ha tap the YubiKey, uh, the YubiKey Neo to the back of the phone to send the one-time passcode. Well, we tried, I tried this when we got it and it, it works beautifully. I, I really want to praise that. I want to say that because, because that was one of the problems. To get the six-digit code from the Google Authenticator and to, and to do all this here, I just swipe it to the back of my, my Neo. It works. It puts it in. It authenticates me and I'm good to go. We certainly we believe that the uh, the NFC uh, and the, the tap the back of the mobile phone, that's the best user experience for doing good security on uh, on Android devices. I don't think anybody really wants to plug anything into the um, you know to the lightning connector or to the um, uh, micro USB slot. A, a tap on the back of the phone is 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 the best user experience to to have you know strong secure hardware outside of a phone and and, and to uh, get it to cooperate in some sort of security protocol there. And I think the way LastPass have implemented it, it, it it's very usable because um, you don't even need to have LastPass running. But LastPass registers that it's interested in the tag that the YubiKey Neo sends and uh, then fire up the LastPass app on an Android device when you uh, when you tap YubiKey on the back and it'll process the uh, the one-time passcode. And, and you said a key phrase there that I really want to uh, kind of push people towards is the secure token is off the phone. Um, if you have a rooted device, if you've got a, a piece of Android malware on here that is a device administrator, it can go into your Google Authenticator steal your cryptographic secrets, and then throw those codes all over the internet, give it to whoever it wants. Um, with the YubiKey, you've actually, with the Neo, you have to physically get within close proximity to make that code register. So this is secure as long as it's in a different pocket than your phone is. Yeah, and one of our design goals, it had to be within a couple of centimeters of the of the phone uh, because we, you know, we didn't want people with scanners, you know, trying to... Uh, 
pull off one-time passcodes off your off your Neo from you know from a meter or two. Um, you know that would need you know, a nuclear power station to generate enough enough energy to uh, power up an NFC at a meter or two. So uh, yeah, it really is it really is very secure. And um, just for a bit of fun, we we uh, have developed a replacement uh, app. Or Google Authenticator, which works with the uh, with the Neo and a special applet that goes on the Neo. It's all open source, so if you want to have a look and see how those sorts of applications are built, head over to opensource.ubico.com and you will see um, both the Android app and the secure applet that actually runs inside the YubiKey Neo um, that allows you to store those cryptographic secrets within what we call a secure element. On the uh, on the YubiKey Neo. By the way, all our show note links will be accurate and will be posted immediately after. So if you missed it here, don't worry about it. And that keyword <coughs> "secure token" has been a bane of my existence since the Galaxy Nexus on Verizon has been launched, because as you know, Google Wallet does not and Verizon go back and forth on the who owns the secure element, and Verizon's winning right now. So to hear secure element not on a Verizon phone is a good thing for me. <laughs> so yeah, we all have issues with um, you know, with the, uh, our, our cell phone companies uh, having too much control over our lives, and and you know we certainly believe that uh, you you should have security things should be outside of the control of your cell phone provider. Tom, did we ever talk about two factor on the show? I don't think so. I think we've casually mentioned it, um, but I'll go ahead and go into the basics. Um, Two-factor authentication is something that everyone needs to use from your bank, from Facebook, to Dropbox, to especially LastPass. Two-factor authentication means somebody has to have things you know and something you have um, in order to log into your account. Um, instead of somebody just stealing your username and password and getting into Facebook, they all of a sudden need to steal your username, your password, and then that special thing you have, whether it's some random codes on a phone or whether it's a one-time password from a YubiKey. Um, they now need to steal something from you in, uh, in order to get to your accounts. So it's really a, a very good way to enable big security, really, really tight security on whatever application you're logging into. I, I agree there, Tom. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, and in, in this world, if you make something a little bit more difficult for the bad guys, there are plenty of people who don't, so they go off somewhere else. So uh, um, you know, un unless you're being uh, targeted by a state agency, then uh, you know, two-factor authentication really should be the default for everybody uh, who, who, who cares about their online identities and, and, and make sure that they don't... Uh, um, you know, don't fall foul, and we see these huge password databases that get, um, you know, that, that that get hacked away. You know, passwords just just it just isn't good enough anymore. Right. Well, and the other part was, and and I'm getting a lot of positive feedback on the show. People are asking me and asking the show. Well, I just changed all my LastPass passwords. Now what? And we tell them, turn on two factor. A week later, they say, I can't use this. It's too hard. And we say, look, it's not easy. Security is not easy. But if you want to be secure, we're trying to find the best methods. Google Authenticator was a, is still is a great method. However, with I, I recommend the Yubico now because with the Neo, you just swipe the back of your phone. You put you have you have it on your keychain. It, it looks very solid, very durable. I mean. I have no problem banging this on the table and still it's still working, sticking it into my computer and pushing the button. can't be easier than that. So I, I got this uh, YubiKey back in the day when uh, Mt. Gox, the Bitcoin exchange, was giving these out for free. And they said, hey, you, know, you do a lot of business with us. We would like you to increase your security. And I've been using Google Authenticator. So they sent me a YubiKey for free. So I've had this for about two years now. And it has been on my keychain. It's been through everything you can imagine. Um, and it has held up remarkably well. And it still works perfectly. Um, and, and not to, not to um, you know, deride the, the solution or anything, but the YubiKey is honestly the best security device for mom and dad, for grandma, for non-technical people, because they just plug it in, they hit the button, and they're using two-factor authentication. There's no codes. There's nothing to scan. There's nothing to memorize. It's all built right in. Uh, uh, thanks, Tom. Yeah, that, that, that's very good. I mean, our design goals originally were that when you drop a YubiKey on a table, it should sound like a poker chip. 
So it should sound as if there's qualities, and, and in order to get that sound, we, we ended up using a glass reinforced plastic, and there's about 40% glass inside the plastic that, <laughs> that is used to YubiKey. And it's hermetically sealed. Um, we had a diver uh, who was doing a trip to the Red Sea, take it down every on every dive, down to, up to 150 feet down, bring it back to the surface, wash it off with some fresh water, and, and put it in his, um, in his computer. And that uh, you can see some pictures of that on our site. We've also had amazing stories back from our customers. I think probably the most um, amusing one for, uh, for holiday week is uh, somebody uh, called us and said uh, they're very concerned that uh, their dog had eaten their YubiKey. And we said, well, we don't think it'll do any damage to the uh, to the dog because all the you know all the corners and everything are rounded and and so on. So just let the course of nature take its uh, take its path <laughs> and uh, just make sure you you wash it really well before you try and use it again. And sure enough, it, it worked fine once it had been through through the course of nature. <laughs> but yeah, we we are very proud of the. Um, of the uh, robustness of, of, of the YubiKey. Some people say, look, can I, you know, can I have a cover or a case or something to stop it getting damaged on my keychain? And we say, no, no, just put it on your keychain. I mean, this, this is my YubiKey that I use many times every day. It's been on my keychain for a couple of years. Um, and, you know, the gold is still, you know, there's some scratch marks on it, but it's still all, all gold and uh, uh, works first time every time. What about the Neo? Is is it built the same way? Do we have to worry about the NFC uh, My Fair thing breaking? Um, okay, the 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 Neo is much more. There's a lot more electronics. There are two um, uh, chips inside the uh, the Neo. One is um, uh, a general purpose uh, chip that that does all the uh, the interface stuff, but the other is a secure element. Um, a, a secure element is a piece of silicon that has been specially hardened uh, to withstand uh, various types of attack. Um, and it's uh, it's the same technology that's used in uh, chip and pin uh, cards for, for those countries that use uh, uh, chips inside their credit cards. Um, and also many mobile phones have secure elements uh, within it. The, the iPhone, for example, they call it a secure enclave, but it's a, it's a secure uh, trust zone within the, um, within the A7 chip. Um, and so it's a, a, a tried and tested Technologies that the people who really care most about security generally use to handle their cryptographic uh, secrets, and so the YubiKey Neo has one of those, uh, one of those inside it. The NFC aerial is is um, on the YubiKey Neo is much smaller than uh, a standard sort of credit card sized aerial, and our design goal there was it should work within one to two centimeters of you, of the uh, uh, aerial on the back of the. Um, on the back of your Android device, uh, but the uh, the power falls off so dramatically in NFC. It's it's a it's a third power, I think, um, uh, relationship. So once you once you go beyond uh, five or ten centimeters, even with a very very powerful uh, uh, radio, you wouldn't be able to trigger the NFC functionality of the YubiKey. Yeah, that's that's one of the first things I tested with my Neo is saying how how far away this could get before the device stopped registering and. Uh, for someone to steal the cryptographic key on this, they have to be quite literally on top of you with a scanner. Um, so you would know if somebody's trying to get your one-time password. Yeah, they, they wouldn't uh, steal the cryptographic secret because that never leaves a secure element, but they might get one of the one of the OTPs, one of the one-time pass, passcodes, if they could get within one or two centimeters of you with a with an appropriate scanner. But of course, next time you um, you use your YubiKey, you invalidate all previous passcodes anyway, so uh, uh, it, it has little value. And they need to know your password because, as you say, Tom, two factors. Yeah. Well, can we talk about what what... When I touch this on the keyboard and I get this uh, 64 characters of uh, noise, what is that? I mean, I read on the websites, the first 12 is something and the last, whatever, 50 is something else. Yeah, okay, let's talk a little bit of uh, technical detail. So what, what we emit is a 44-character string. Um, the first 12 characters are always the same. And uh, we refer to that as your public identity. That's the, the, the username of the YubiKey, if you were. Um, and then the remaining 32 characters are uh, an encrypted set of, of counters and, and other information that a validation server can decrypt and uh, then validate the OTP. So first thing you'll notice if you touch your YubiKey and generate lots of these OTPs is it's a very restricted character set that is used. And we call it a modified hexadecimal 
character set, and it, it has A's and and B, uh, sorry, B's and C's, and you know you see some on the, on. Um, I'm looking at some in the chat here, N's and K's and so on. It's actually 16 characters, and we chose those characters uh, very carefully because they are invariant across all the different keyboard layouts there are in the world. Because it presents itself to the computer as a USB keyboard, it's not actually sending characters to the computer, it sends scan codes. And those scan codes then go through the operating system and a map to actually figure out which keys they are. So if you're on a, a French keyboard, for example, where a US keyboard has an A, a French, um, uh, a French key a keyboard has a Z, I think. So uh, you've got these different uh, different uh, keyboard layouts, but the 16 characters we've chosen are invariant across all different keyboard layouts. So that's why you see that s strange character set, and that we call that the modified hexadecimal character set. Um, so yeah, going back, first 12 characters always stay the same. That's the uh, uh, the mod hex equivalent of the serial number. And if you look on the back of a YubiKey, you will see a 2D data matrix and a printed or laser etched um, uh, serial number. And so if you go to a uh, our mod hex calculator on our site, you can convert the two and you'll see that the two numbers are, uh, are the same. And in a, an organization that's deploying large numbers of YubiKeys for, uh, um, uh, for, for whatever, for, for their internal access, for example, uh, then they can use that in the provisioning process. So they can use a scanner and scan the 2D barcode uh, as they issue a YubiKey out to an employee, for example. Um, so the remaining 32 characters, actually, uh, if, if you're using a 16-character alphabet, 32 characters represents 128 bits. Um, and we actually use an AES-128 encryption of a series of counters um, uh, in order to, to uh, present the OTP. Um, so we have counters like... Um, uh, how many times a YubiKey has been inserted into a computer, how many times it's been touched since the last time it was inserted. There's an 8 hertz clock that runs when it's inserted as well. Uh, those are all included. There's a 32-bit um, uh, private identity uh, that is randomly set up when the, um, when the key is manufactured and only known to the YubiKey and the validation server. Um, and uh, some other some other bits and pieces uh, uh, to make it all uh, all secure. And the the um, if you look at our website and our documentation, you'll see a full description of the of the way the OTP is is constructed. Um, but unlike most uh, security companies, we, we are quite happy if you don't want to trust us. So if you want to program your YubiKey with your own secrets, we have open source freely available tools to be able to program a YubiKey with uh, with your own own secrets and indeed the validation service that we run publicly that's all open source code and you can run your own validation service um, and we support not only these 44 character OTPs that are supported by the likes of LastPass but there's an open um, standard for authentication that, that is used within the Google Authenticator, for example, called Oath. You can program up your YubiKey to use Oath codes. Um, and also, you can use your YubiKey to uh, uh, store a static password, um, which some people use with things like TrueCrypt. I don't know if you've covered TrueCrypt on your uh, on your podcast, but if you... Not uh, yet. <laughs> Soon. Maybe a, a taste. If you want to do whole disk encryption, something like TrueCrypt is uh, is pretty good for that. But it's only any good if you have a really, really strong, long, random password. And uh, what a number of people use is to put um, most of that password uh, as a static string in the YubiKey. Um, and then when they come to boot their laptop, they might type in a, a four or six digit pin and then touch a YubiKey, which would then append a lot of a lot of random random junk to it, and then that decrypts your uh, your hard disk. So uh, think about the uh, the YubiKey in its static mode when you when you when you come to talk about uh, TrueCrypt. Um, and uh, the other thing that comes to mind on that is that if, if you have to have a YubiKey for your static password and then another one for your last pass, that's a bit of a pain. So we actually have two slots in each YubiKey, um, uh, and you access the uh, the first slot with a sh short touch gesture and the long slot, uh, the, the second slot with a long touch gesture. So I, for example, have a, a, a static. TrueCrypt password in the second slot uh, for when I boot my uh, boot my computer uh, and the regular OTP that I use in the first slot. Can I just to 
reiterate what you just said or go have a question. Can I use the personalization tool to uh, to set up those two slots with both the Nano and the Neo? The the standard YubiKey, the Nano, the Neo, all use the same personalization tool. Yeah. Okay. So so can we talk to you about the different products that you have and what should be the best for the average person? Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's start. It's a very simple pro uh, two by two product matrix we have. Um, we have two different form factors. We have what I've my show you. So we have the the standard YubiKey, which looks a little bit like a a memory stick. Um, it's thinner, very very thin, um, and lighter and stronger and much 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 more robust than a memory stick. And we have something we call the Nano, which actually is just the end bit of the YubiKey. It has all the same capabilities as, as a YubiKey, it just is much smaller. It is this very small, very, very small. It fits flush I, into the USB and and it does. It's scary It's scary how small it is. And it, it is that small and the, the main reason is so that people who use laptops uh, and are using the YubiKey a lot, they love to leave the YubiKey in the laptop but when they snap the laptop shut and put it in their bag, they'd want to keep the YubiKey there and don't want to break it off or, or do any damage. Um, and that's the, the use case that um, uh, particularly engineers like. And um, uh, if you ever get a chance to go onto the Facebook campus, you'll see all the engineers there. They've got YubiKeys in their, uh, uh, in their lap uh, laptops, in their MacBooks, and their, their YubiKey Nanos that just, just stay in those laptops almost all, all the time, except when they need to send a laptop out for repair or, or upgrade it or whatever. Um, so there are two form factors, and then there's two sets of electronics. There's the standard electronics, which is the two-slot YubiKey that generates static or oath or the YubiKey uh, 44 character passcodes, one-time passcodes, um, and the advanced electronics, which do all that, and in addition have the secure element and can do uh, interesting things like um, uh, the uh, Google Authenticator replacement, uh, can do things like um, uh, PIV, which is a, a, an identity standard that that Windows uses for doing sort of smart card log on onto a Windows domain um, and can do uh, things like open PGP so it can it can generate and store your public private key pairs uh, for uh, PGP encryption and that's that's really powerful um, and it's it's uh, there's two things I want to mention um, the first is the YubiKey can be really, really simple for just, you know, touch it once, you're logged on, you're done with everything you need to do. Um, but if you want to, if you're a tech nerd, if you're a guy that likes to hack around with the hardware, this can do basically anything you want it to in the realm of security. You can use it to encrypt emails, you can use it with TrueCrypt, you can use it to emit strong passwords. Um, this is really the most powerful, tiny little security device I've ever seen. Um, and then the second thing is, if you don't trust it, if you don't trust the code, if you want to get a look at it yourself, everything is open source. You can look at the auth server, you can look how the codes are generated, everything is wide open, and if you wanted to, you could audit it yourself. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely our, our philosophy, and I'd differentiate it to most security firms that, that tend to have everything locked up and closed, and they're really only interested in talking to to large large companies. I and mean, I think we're you know, one of the first security hardware companies that that really embrace um, every everybody from an individual to you know some of the largest internet brands on the planet. Before we get lost any, with anything, you said that you had a coupon code that we can give our listeners. Can you describe that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we put together for the holiday season a special pack, uh, a box of the three three of our products. Uh, the YubiKey Nano, which is the standard uh, electronics in the very, very small um, packaging. The standard YubiKey, which I'm... I'm showing the Nano on the screen, if uh, you guys can see it. It's very okay. small and very hard to show. So the Nano, the standard YubiKey, and also the YubiKey Neo. So the three are three products. Um, we are putting those into a box, and we've got it out for the holiday season at a special price of, of, of $99. But just for a couple of days, for insecurity uh, uh, viewers, 
we've put a coupon code that gives you another fifteen dollars off that price so not to ninety nine dollars but eighty four dollars uh, and if you head over to um, our store https colon slash slash store dot ubico dot com if you head over there uh, you'll see in the middle of the catalog you'll see the holiday pack uh, and if you click on on that during checkout enter the insecurity coupon code and you'll get that extra fifteen dollars off but I warn you it's uh, it's only valid until Tuesday the December the third. Well, no, that's great, and when, and like I said, we're getting a lot of positive feedback, so I hope the people that are listening take advantage of it, because we're saying, you heard it here, it's durable, it works, it can be as simple as just authenticating you against LastPass, or as complicated as you want to make it, and it's going to be one of those future-proof devices, I think, moving forward. My, my other question was, what happens if I lose my YubiKey? Like you said, the dog ate it, or I can see my baby slobbering all over it. What happens if it if it does if it does get lost? Well, obviously, uh, those those two scenarios, you just wash it off and, and carry on using it. But yes, it, it does get lost, and really, the responsibility there lies with the uh, with the application or, or the the service provider you uh, you're using. So, for example, with LastPass, they allow you to store up to five YubiKeys. Uh, and any one of those five can be used to unlock your uh, your vault or download your vault. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, that's an example of they've thought about it. Uh, what happens if you, um, you know, you, you lose your YubiKey? Well, you should have a second YubiKey maybe. Um, uh, often two people uh, have their own YubiKey, but they put their... their uh, YubiKey into each other's LastPass faults as a backup, so they can uh, they can unlock it uh, using some using their you know, their partner's YubiKey. Um, and again, LastPass is a good example. If all else fails and you've lost everything and it doesn't, uh, you can't use your your YubiKey anymore. They have a an email. Uh, you can set up a, a an email address that you only use for security messages with LastPass, for example, um, and uh, they'll send you an email with a one-time code that. That, that lets you uh, uh, lets you get through. So it's really up to the uh, the service to determine uh, what is appropriate within its security model for um, for backup and for, uh, for for access. If you have no, um, if you've lost your lost your device, I mean, some of our servers that we use YubiKeys to access, we don't have any backup. You know, we, there's no there's no if you if we lost all our YubiKeys, we wouldn't be able to get to the servers. <laughs> but we have enough YubiKeys that, that we uh, we feel pretty confident. With. Look again, it's it's uh, we say this with security. It's on you. It's if you gave it to somebody else, then you can't trust. You would have to trust them, and we we believe in trusting yourself only. So so it's important to write down those one-time passwords. Uh, Take, take advantage of the holiday pack. Have three. Put one in the safe deposit box, and just in case you do lose it, you can go and get it and, uh, and, have the pro and, and solve that problem. And I see you're talking about Facebook. We spoke about Google. It looks like you're getting a lot of company penetration. Is that, I mean, should we see more of this in the future? I, I think so. I, I certainly that's certainly what our plans are. That you will see YubiKeys being used in uh, across lots of different services, particularly in 2014. I think you'll start to see uh, um, support coming out on, on a lot of very mainstream mainstream services. Um, you know, we, we've we started small. We started trying to service um, small uh, organizations and individuals uh, and their security needs. And what we found is actually some of these largest um, largest uh, uh, internet brands on the um, in the world have found that what we do they like because of the openness, because of the simplicity, and because of the great user experience. Well, we have to wrap up. So, Tom, any last words? Um, the only thing I can say about the YubiKey is it's honestly it's the most brain dead simple two factor authentication you could possibly have. And in a security product, that's honestly what you need. That's the number one feature is it's easy to use. Um, so go out this holiday season, get your mom a YubiKey, go buy the holiday pack, give it to your aunts, your uncles, your grandma, set everyone up with one of these because they're easy. It's just easy, and it's secure. And do let us know your stories. We love to hear about uh, real real use cases, real, real stories of, of what people are doing and the fun things people are doing. Okay, guys, time to end. So everyone say goodbye.
Bye, See everybody. you guys. Have a good have a good rest of your day. <laughs>